I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Stan. So vehicle tracking, um, this is a software that came out not too terribly long ago. Uh, it's been out for a couple of years now. I believe the uh, 2014 release was the first one that it could be installed on, if I remember, recall correctly. Um, there, just to give you a little bit of background on vehicle tracking, there were two big competitors in the swept path analysis market. There was the auto turn and there was auto track. Autodesk purchased AutoTrack and has rebranded it as vehicle tracking. So if you're familiar with AutoTrack, this is basically the same stuff. It's just now rebranded. Uh, the other nice thing about it is when you purchase vehicle tracking, you get all of the modules that came with vehicle tr with the AutoTrack rather than just the individual ones. So it is an, an all-encompassing thing. It's not, I have to purchase this module then, this module, and this module. Y you get it all together just to just to kind of clarify the air here a little bit. All right, so vehicle tracking, it does several different things. The first thing we're going to take a look at is the sweat path analysis. So I've got a vehicle, it's moving, driving down here, it's turning around this, can it make the turn? Is it going to fit within the confines of the road? So we can do a swept path analysis here, and this is what most people use the software for, hence the term vehicle tracking. All right? uh, this is the same thing AutoTurn does, um, you, you know, those beautiful templates that you get from all over the place that you're turning templates, that, that's basically what this does here. Uh, it, it does do more than just swept path analysis, though. It, it also helps when you're laying out things like uh, roundabouts. So we can come in and we can do the uh, horizontal layout of a roundabout and, you know, put in the, uh, the different bays and the turns and the crosswalks and this, the signage and make all sorts of fun changes to it. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll see an example of that. It will also create a corridor for us for that, um, that roundabout. In addition to those two things, it also helps us with laying out parking lots. So we can come in and we can lay out our parking and some great tools for laying out parking. If you ever had to lay out the striping for our parking lot, this, this is a huge time saver here. Uh, some great tools and uh, we'll go ahead and see how that works as well. So well, let's just go ahead and get to it. But before I do, I've got to ask you guys a question. Uh, and this is a little off topic, but we are considering putting together an advanced roadway design class. Um, and what I would like to know is, do you guys think this would be something that you guys would take advantage of? Brian, why don't you give a, just a couple line description of what you mean by an advanced roadway design class? What would you cover in there? Yeah, so... In the uh, standard class that we have, we, we touch on roadway design, we touch on alignments, we touch on profiles, we touch on um, the, the corridor modeling. This would get into a more in-depth class. This would get into super elevations. This would get into uh, advanced cross sections, corridors that target multiple things and combine surfaces for targets and just really the advanced roadway modeling. Uh, probably get into sub-assembly composer and things like that. So great. That's a, you know, we, we like to develop these classes. We're trying to take a, a little bit more of a, a scientific approach to things with some things we're doing here at CAD 1 to improve our services. So uh, polls like this are, are part of that process. Right. And, and you know how we, we have those four one-day classes. We have the hydrology and hydraulics, the styles, the grading, the pipe networks. This would kind of fit into that workflow there, and uh, <laughs> I, I just read Daniel's comment. He says, uh, where we're going, we don't need roads. So I, 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 you always got to get, you got to love the Back to the Future references. So, All right, we'll go ahead and close that. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate your input there. And uh, let, let's go ahead and get started, shall we? So I'm going to switch over here to Civil 3D. And let's see, let's come over here and let's do a, a sweat path analysis here. There we go. Almost. Sorry sorry for the lag. It is uh, our 
voice is way ahead of our screen. Too. Yeah, it, it, it is. All right, there we go. All right, so what I want to do is I want to do a sweat path analysis. I have in here, um, hang on. Got to get my pointer up and around here. So I have a, a little roundabout here, and I want to see whether or not I can get a truck around it. So, so what kind of a truck do I want to use here? Well, I, I want to use a standard design vehicle. I, I want to use a WB40, and I want to know whether or not it can manage to sort of navigate this particular traffic circle, or a roundabout, or, or whatever you want to call it, right? So on my ribbon, I have a whole set of tools that are geared for vehicle tracking. So when you install vehicle tracking, you'll get this ribbon. And you'll notice it's kind of broken up into those three different areas. We have sweat path analysis, we have the parking tools, and we have the junctions or the roundabouts. So we're going to start over here on the sweat path analysis. There's lots of different ways of doing sweat path analysis. You can have it follow a path. Let's say, for example, you're doing, oh, I don't know, say light rail in the city of Denver. And you wanted to know where is the rail, the, the uh, vehicle is going to, you know, overhang things. And so you can get that swept path. All right, but what I'm going to do, I'm just going to come in here and I'm just going to do an auto drive. Now, as I do this, what it's going to ask me for is going to ask me for some things. Uh, like, for example, the scale. You know, this is just kind of some of those pre-setup type things. Surfaces. So in here, I have an existing ground surface. I also have a finished ground surface, which is kind of the combination of everything. So as I'm doing this analysis, it will allow me to do a clearance analysis as well. And then my paths, I can come in and set different layers for how I want things to look. So I'll go ahead and select OK here. Um, it's going to ask me, where do I want my vehicle to start? So I don't know, let's say I want it to start. Uh, let's see, let's turn some stuff off down here. And there we go. Uh, I'm going to start down here, and I want it to go this direction. Now, I've already done this several times in this drawing, and so it just simply used the last vehicle I used. Now, if this was the first time I had done this in this drawing, it would be asking me, what vehicle do you want to use? But what I want to show you is the vehicles that come with the software. All right, so these all come, and so we're looking at, uh, you know, you know, all sorts of different places. All right, you, you want to go to work in Peru? There you go. We've got uh, design vehicles for Peru. All right. I've never done any work in Peru, but apparently we've got the vehicles to do that. All right. uh, in, in our case, I'm more interested in the U.S. So I expand this out. You'll have some specific state ones in here. Now, I, I don't live in any of those states, so I'm going to go to the statewide Ashto. All right, you have 1990, 2001, 2004, 2011. So I'm going to choose the Ashto 2011. All right, the U.S. Make this a little bit better. U.S. customary because we're in the U.S. and we're backwards and we can't join the rest of the world in using a decent system. Oh, measure. stop. Right, someday <laughs> we'll change to the metric system. All right, and here are all of the vehicles that are available for Ashto 2011. So what kind of a vehicle are you looking to get around? And you can create custom vehicles in here. All right, but one I'm going to use is just a WB40. So this is kind of the, the go-to design vehicle for a lot of situations. All right, I'll go ahead and proceed with that. Now what I do like about this, Brian, is that you know it goes beyond roadway vehicles. There's, there's uh, a whole host of uh, aircraft. Oh, yeah. so, and totally there's even it. hospital gurneys. Yeah, so we have... You got aircraft, we have commercial aircraft, and I can't pronounce that one. All right, so we've got aircraft in here. Let's see, we got a, a Boeing uh, 737, right? we've got a 747-200, right? and uh, we've got all sorts of fun stuff in here. I don't forget the, the new Airbus in here. That big one? Yeah, it's the Airbus, what, 3... Uh, it's the... Uh, 330? 380. 380. There you go. There's the Airbus 380. That's cool. Yeah. So as you can see, there's all sorts of different things we've, we've got in here. Now, again, I'm going to use that uh, WB-40 here. So I'll choose the, the vehicle that I want to use. So WB-40. 
Let's see, we got to turn pipe double. There we go. Yeah, I'm not going to try and roll that one around in this little subdivision. <laughs> All right, we'll use the WP40. I'll proceed. All right, position the vehicle. The vehicle's already positioned. I already set the vehicle to be positioned. And, and now I simply click on the proceed button, and away I go. And now I simply start sketching in where I want my vehicle to go. Now it's a little jumpy on there, but as I'm moving my mouse around, I'm getting a chance to see where it is I'm going. So I don't know. I'm not a truck driver, so please don't uh, get too upset if I totally mess this up. Get, but, your, get your family off the street nonetheless. Yeah, exactly. Um, right. and, and just so you do know, it's it's running very smoothly on Brian's screen, but it, the, it the go-to meeting is just so you don't think it's always that jumpy. And as you can see, the way I drove this this time, I was not able to make this curve here. So I, I can just simply go to uh, remove the last down here at the command line option. So I'll just do L, enter, and I can back up and try it again. So maybe I'll try coming over to the other side of the road a little bit before I jump into here. So maybe I can come up here a little bit more, and looks like, uh, look at that, I was able to make it around this time. And now I'm able to make it into and around the corner. Now just to make things a little bit easier to see, let me go ahead and freeze my surface here. And we'll freeze some sidewalks. And whatever that is. And so here you can see my my swept path. I was able to make it around that. And apparently I froze my roundabout as well. Roundabout. Yeah, I don't want to do that. All right. So cool. So I, I made it. What, what can I do now? Well, there's a couple of things I can do. Well, I can animate it. So once I get my path created, I can animate. I can come in here, I'll click on Animate, and I'll simply hit the Play button, and you'll watch the little truck drive through the subdivision. Right, now it's going kind of slow right now. I can speed it up. I can just use the controls on here to speed things up and slow things down, so I'll speed it up a couple of little bits here. Um, it's much smoother on my screen than what I'm seeing on the preview here. It's actually able to just watch it drive around, and so I can see how things go. Could you see that in 3D, Brian? In 3D? Oh, that would be kind of cool, wouldn't it? Would be. Let's see if we can see this in 3D. So I, I can come over here and I can do a flyby camera. Now, before I do that, I've got some other surfaces on here. Uh, so I'm going to isolate my finished ground surface as well as the swept path that I just created. All right, so I'll just go into my isolate objects, go ahead and isolate those objects. It turns everything else off. And now when I go into my Animate, I've got this option here to go into a 3D view. So I'll go ahead and click on that. Now this is probably not going to come across too well on the uh, GoToMeeting. But there it is. I've got some different options. So my camera, where do I want my camera to be? So I, I can set my camera, say, to be tracking a path. So it'll follow along with the vehicle. I can set it at a fixed position. Right, so I want to put it at a specific spot. So maybe I want to put it right there in the middle of that uh, roundabout or traffic circle. Right? Uh, but I'm going to leave it set to tracking a path. I'm going to target the front of the trailer. That's what I want to target. Then now when I hit play, is going to drive along the ground and follow along. And as we get into the intersection, you'll see the truck start to turn. And again, the camera is tr tracking the trailer, so the trailer doesn't look like it's moving. Everything else is moving around it. I can also tra target the front vehicle, or I could do a, a driver's eye view. Let me speed this up just a hair. And again, on my screen, it looks very smooth. looks like a regular rotation. Now, I don't know if you noticed that or not, but I just drove over a curb, and you saw the vehicle actually tilt. Let me see if I can 
back up to that here real quick. All right, so I, I backed up. We'll go ahead and set this back to a regular speed. Hang on. All right, so as the, the vehicle drives over that curb, you'll see that the trailer tip as it hits that curb. So it is actually doing this in 3D. So there it goes over the curb and it tips. Now that wasn't a very visual way of saying it. It, it, it did it. It wasn't real obvious. So let's do something uh, maybe a little bit more obvious, shall we? All right, so I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm going to put in another path. And I'm going to have it do something really silly. All right. I'm going to have it kind of hit that that inner portion right there for some strange reason. I don't know why anybody would ever do that other than show it to show you how that this this actually works. Show you here. the physics. That's right. So go on my 3D view once again. Go ahead and play this. Speed it up just a hair. Truth of the matter is I can see that, you know, I don't I don't know if there's not more elegant tools or not, but just shooting from the hip. I could see that being used in accident recreation or something like that, potentially. Possibly. But as you can see, as it goes over that, Whoa. it it really does go over it. Jumping Jiminy. Yep. So I, I have had people ask me about accident reconstruction with this sort of thing. Um, if you're want, curious, it, it, it really doesn't play well with accident reconstruction because That's you can't side, have any yeah. sliding. There's no friction. Yeah. Um, there's no physics involved with it, so there's no mass or collision or anything like that. Just over the hump, that. and that's that. Yeah. Right. Um, I bet if I hit one tire on top of a wall, it would be turning 90 degrees bird horizontally, and then it could flip right back up when it got to the end of the wall. So th there's really no physics involved here. Wiley Coyote physics. <laughs> All right. So I just want to show you real quick um, that you can customize your own vehicles. So I, I worked with one company. They, uh, I don't remember exactly what they do, but they needed to hook up tow trucks to buses. And huh. They needed to tow the buses through their yard or something like that. I can't like imagine that. who'd do that. Yeah. So uh, that's what they wanted to do. and. Uh, so let's go see what we can do here. So I can go into my Vehicle Library Explorer here. It's going to show me, well, this is the same thing we saw earlier. And uh, what we can do is we can go create our own vehicle or modify one that we already have. So let's see, let me modify this one. So this is basically a truck towing a bus. but. Well, the dimensions aren't quite right. The pivot point's not quite right. For example, here the pivot point is right over the axis, axle, right? Well, that's not really where the, it's going to be for a tow truck. The pivot point would be back here somewhere, and then the truck would come off the end here. Things along this line. All right, so I uh, just saw a question. Does this work for trains? Absolutely. There are trains, trams, and rail vehicles in here. So we've got trams and rails and again you can create your own to match oh I don't know whatever it is you need to match and there's your US streetcar I don't know if this is anything like what we do here in Denver area but yes we do have those All right, so again I'm gonna go ahead and uh, make a copy so I'm just simply gonna right click on here and I'm gonna edit a copy of it I don't know why the copy isn't fully written out here um, but it's not and that's okay. So I can call it whatever you want. So we'll call this one truck pulling a bus. All right. It, what type of vehicle is it? So we've got these options here. It's, a, it's an articulated vehicle. All right. We'll leave it set to that. Uh, number of units. All right. So I can bump up the number of units if I want. I'm not going to. I'm going to drop that back down. All right. You just walk your way through the wizard. Number of front axles. What's the front axle width? Number of wheels on each side. Number of rear axles. So I want two axles, so it puts in a second axle there for me. And so you can continue to just simply work your way through this. Right, the rear track width, wheels on each side, right, um, the wheelbase. 
So maybe I want to increase the wheelbase a little bit. So instead of 12 and a half feet, it, it's really uh, more like eight and a half feet. I don't know. I'm just making something up. I don't know if that's good or not. And you can see everything starts to adjust. And you get this dynamic feedback saying, so okay, well, I, I messed that up. All right, the axle spacing, what's the spacing between the axles? You know, maybe I want that to be, I don't know, 12 feet for some odd reason. All right, you can do that. And, and you just work your way through and you end up with whatever vehicle you need. So I'm not actually going to finish my way through here. I just want you to see that it, it's really simple to do. So, does anybody have any questions on the, the sweat path analysis here? There's one more thing I want to do, but I want to make sure that no questions. All no, right. we're, we're all right right now. All right, so I, I've got this hump here, right? And in this case, can this truck actually drive over that? That's a good question. So, does it have the clearance for it? So, we can do a, where is it? A ground conflict report. So um, are, you, are you trying to get into this parking lot and it's got a, a valley pan and it's got steep approach and uh, uh, things like that? So I can run a ground conflict report. Right. Now you proceed with the default values and it looks like right here we've got a conflict. So I've got an issue right here, which which I kind of expected, right? Yeah. So that's the only spot I have a, a conflict in this particular instance. And uh, yeah. now other things I can do, I can insert a profile. So I want to know what the actual vehicle looks like. So I can come over here and I can insert a, a profile for the vehicle showing what the vehicle looks like. I can put in a the outlines. So what this will do for me is it allows me to place the vehicle outline at those important spots along here. Now this one's kind of boring, but uh, so I can add those additional outlines in here. Just uh, makes it nicer to plot. And, and there's quite a bit else that we can do as well. All right, so that's the swept path analysis piece. The next thing we're going to get into is the parking. All right, so I'm using aerial imagery here. Um, this might take a while to propagate over the web, so I'll try to go slow. Uh, but basically what I've done is I've, brought a, I've got uh, the Bing imagery for the Denver area turned on, and I uh, found a parking lot, and I want to recreate the striping on here. So on a vehicle tracking tab, I have the parking tools. All right, so I'm going to start by modifying, let's see, uh, this parking here. So I, I want to do this parking line. So let, let's see, let's do this one. It's a little bit simpler. So I come over here and I can create a new row of parking. So I simply create a new parking row. And again, I've got all sorts of different standards. We do have US parking standards, so I'm going to use the ITE guideline for parking facility location and design. There's a very good reason that I'm using this one. And the reason is that it's first in the list. I'm not exactly sure what the difference between them is. All right, so it's going to create this new standard. So I'll select OK. All right, again, I've got some options. If I had a surface, I could drape these objects onto the final surface. I don't have any surfaces in this particular drawing, so it's not going to do anything, but I could. All right. And now I simply start sketching in my parking lows. Now I can come over here and I can do quite a bit of default. So am I parking on the left and the right or just the left or just the right? In this case I'm doing both sides. So I'll come in here and I'll pick my first point. And then, oh, you know what? I, I'm doing islands. It, it's putting islands in here. I forgot to turn the islands off. So I, I can come over here and I can uncheck the start and the end islands. And now it's not putting islands in that there any longer for me. And I'll come up here and I'll end about there, and it puts my parking stalls in for me. Right. This particular one didn't use the same width as what was already there, which is fine. All right. I can go back and I can adjust stall widths if I need to. 
But uh, there it is. There's my parking. I, I can do the same thing over here. Let me uh, do this real quick. Let me uh, sketch in this edge of as this edge of this road here. I see it will come up something like that, and then we'll come up. And I'm just drawing lines here that represent those edges. I'll do a quick fillet of these with a nice little radius of, oh, I don't know, something. I'll start with something like that, perhaps. Oh, that's not quite good enough, so I'll scale this down just a hair. So I'll scale about that endpoint. Let's try that again. Scale this little circle, this curve. About that endpoint, we'll do a reference from there to there, and let's see, we'll go to about there. Nice thing about doing it this way is I know I get things that are nice and tangent. All right now, if I measure this quick distance here, 76 feet. So that probably should have been 75 feet. So now I can do a fill up with a radius of 75, from that to that, and I've got my nice little curve in here. So now I've got geometry in here. I can now sketch my parking along this line. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to do a new row once again. Right? This pool down here is my drawing. So this is the stuff that's in my drawing. I'm going to use the same one that we had before. So I'll use this area-based one. All right, I'll proceed. Now in this case, I only want parking on the left side. So I'm going to do left only. Now I could do you know, change it after the fact. I don't want a start island, and I don't want an end island. And I'll simply come in here, and I'll snap to the end there. I'll snap to the end up here. I'll snap to the end of the curve. Now, if you notice, I cut the curve, and, and that's fine. And, and then I'll come down to the end, and I'll snap to the end down there as well. I'm done with it. I'm happy with it. Well, except for I, I need my curve down here. So if I zoom in here a hair, when I select this, you'll notice two grips. Right, this little triangle grip allows me to change this line into a curve. And what I want to do is I want this to snap to that curve. So I, when I see it snap to the curve, I left click, and it puts in my curve for me. So even though I didn't have it originally, I have it now, and everybody's happy. All right, let's take a look at these stalls down here. Uh, it'd be nice to put in the uh, accessible stalls. All right, so I, I want to change these. So I'm going to go modify the stalls. I can modify the individual stalls here. So I'm going to come over here to the parking bay. I'm going to edit the parking bay. It's going to ask me which row do you want to edit the parking bays for. So I, I want to edit them for this row. And then which bay do you want to edit? You kind of see that little red grip in the middle changes as I move my mouse around. So I want to start down here at the very first one. And what type of bay do you want this to be? Well, I want this to be not a normal bay. I want this to be a disabled bay. Now, first time I saw this, is like, well, why would I want to disable the bay? That, that, that's not what this is referring to. So this product was originally developed, I believe, in England. And they refer to the handicap stalls as disabled stalls. So I'm going to change this to Disabled. And then when I select OK, it changes that stall to a Disabled stall for me. Now, I want to do several of these. So I'm going to come over here and do the next one. I'm going to change it once again to Disabled. And this time, I'm going to choose Copy To. And as I copy to, I can then just click in the next one, and the next one, and the next one. And you can see how they're all getting added as disabled stalls now. Brian, does it have any tool that kind of automatically calculates you know, the rules around how many disabled stalls you need for a given area? Not that I know of. I, I, I don't think it has the any sort of uh, analysis tools to determine how many stalls you need. That, that's going to vary depending upon the municipality it is, and use but... and things like that. So. Didn't know if there were some standards that applied to that. That was just my own curiosity there. 
Now, in this example, you can see they put in a, the double stall. So they, uh, you know, we only had the the accessibility between every other stall. All right, so I can go in and create my own custom stalls here. So let me do this here real quick. I'm going to set this basically back the way it was. I'll go ahead at my parking bay again. All right, I'm going to set this one back to normal just for now. And I'll copy this to these other ones. I'm just setting them back the way they were. And I'm going to come in here. I'm going to modify this one. I want to create a new parking stall type. So I hit the ellipsis. All right, here are my base styles. I'm going to take the disabled style, and I'm going to duplicate it. And I'll name this one um, access driver side. And then I can come down here, my bay markings, my safety zone. So the safety zone is that little that hatch area that we see in between the parking stalls. And again, I want to create a new one, so I'm going to copy the disabled safety zone. So I'll, I want to modify it. No, I don't want to modify the disabled one. I'm going to duplicate it, and I'll call this one. Which one was I working on? Driver's side, right? Driver's safety zone. And then my extra for the passenger, I'll simply set that to zero. So this is now using the driver safety zone, right? I, I want to create a new one. Uh, so again, I'll duplicate the this one, and we'll call this one the passenger. All right. Well, be consistent on this one. Access passenger side. My safety zone. Well, I'm going to start with that. I don't have one yet, so we'll start with the driver safety zone. We'll create, we'll duplicate that, and we'll call this one the passenger safety zone. And the extra for the driver will set to zero. The extra for the passenger will set to five. And now you can see my driver side is using the driver side safety zone. The access, the passenger side is using the passenger side safety zone. Um, if you want, you can change the width of the bays. I'm just going to leave it set the way they are. And now I can access my passenger zone. I'll copy to every other. So that was the passenger side. And then I'll repeat the process for this other one, and I'll set it to the driver's side. And then I'll copy that to the other one. And these are set up to share the safety zone so it doesn't duplicate the safety zone for us. Once I've laid out all my parking, I can then create reports. Let's see, where's my reports? Now they're in here somewhere. There's my reports. I knew it was in here somewhere. All right, so I can go create a report. So it shows me all of the styles. So I've got my, my standards, my bay types, my vehicle class, safety zones. All right, how many do I have of each? So I've got five driver side, five passenger side, and 99 normal. And it does give us the percentage here so that I can see Am I meeting those criteria that I went and calculated someplace else? You can customize the report. All right, so I, I can you know, say, hey, I just want to see certain things, or, or I can see them all. It's really pretty simple to do. I, I think this is a, a really cool tool. Um, I've got another drawing in here that already has a bunch of parking. And just to give you a, a quick... I don't know why I would do this in this case, but I, I need a road that comes down through here. I, I don't know why, but I want one. And, and so in my parking, I can put in an access road. Where's my access road? Create an access road from a line, or I can create an access road. So I just want to say, hey, I want an access road that goes from here to here, and it splits my parking for me. And so now I have an access road. I'm not sure why they switched over to angle parking. I can switch those back. I think that's what I originally had, and I switched them back in this particular drawing. It's not a big deal. But you can see it, it basically just split those into two parking areas now. Real quick, real easy. 
So I didn't have to go up to the road and then continue beyond the road and then go up to the road and then continue beyond the road. I could just do the whole thing and then put the road down the middle and have it split it for me automatically. And again, just so we can see the report on this one, there aren't any uh, disabled stalls in this case. But if I create a quick report, it shows me I have 281 stalls here. All right, any questions on the parking tools? Nope. Looks like, looks like everybody's content to Excellent. understanding. Things. Excellent. All right. So I'm going to come back over here to this drawing. And I want to put a, a roundabout in. So I have decided that for whatever reason, I want to put a roundabout in at this intersection. Now, this particular drawing doesn't probably make a whole lot of sense to put the intersection here, but I've decided that I want to. Let me go ahead and freeze some layers here real quick, and then I'll thaw a few. I'm just going to thaw my alignments. So what layer? I can't remember what my layer of my alignments are on. So I'll just grab one real quick. Select. I don't know if you guys know this trick. So if I have a civil 3D object that's on a frozen layer and I want to thaw it, simply right-click on the object, select it, and then in your layer pull-down, which I'm sure everybody has put up on their quick access toolbar, you can simply thaw it right there. All right, so here's my main line alignments that I'm using for this intersection, for this roundabout. All right, ignore the white lines. Those are some offset alignments. We're, we're just going to pretend those don't exist. But here I want to put in a roundabout. So I choose new, place a new roundabout. Right? I've got all sorts of different options. Right? So if you decide you want to go work in the Czech Republic, right? you can go create a, a Czech Republic roundabout. But here we're in the U.S., so I, I'm going to use the 2010. I'm going to use an FWH, FHWA 2010 Urban Single Lane Roundabout. Right, if I expand this out, I got my sight line, signage, road marking. I can come in and change these if I need to. Like for example, I can right click on here, edit a copy of it, and then go change all of these different values to match whatever it is you guys need to create. All right. So I'm going to use this roundabout. I'll go ahead and proceed. I was just, uh, do you want to set this current? I just skipped through that. Uh, drawing units again. One drawing unit represents what? In this case, one foot. All right, what do you want to name it? So maybe the names of the streets, uh, the style. So this is really here for how do you want it to look on your screen? Do you want dark colors for a light background, light colors for a dark background? Well, I've got a dark background, so I'm going to use the light colors option. Uh, surfaces, again, i got my existing ground, my finished ground. Uh, project plan on the final surface, sure. Let's go ahead and do that. I'll select OK. And it's going to ask, okay, well, where do you want to put uh, the roundabout? It doesn't have to center on the alignments. Uh, so I'm going to maybe set it offset here just a little bit for some strange, bizarre reason. And there's my roundabout. It's now asking, well, what roads are coming into the roundabout? So I simply select the alignments that are coming into it. So I select my first leg. All right, so it, it picked up on the name of the alignment. So this was uh, Raphael. Leg one, Raphael. Uh, what profile do you want to get elevations from? All right, so I'm going to use the, uh, the finished ground profile that I already have for this alignment. And it puts in the leg. And then I can repeat the process. I'm going to use this leg. This alignment is leg as well. This alignment is two. And finally, this one here. The nice thing about this is it goes ahead and puts in all my signs for me. Right? It puts in the lanes. It puts in everything I need, and when I'm done, it finishes out for me. Now, in this case, because I have surfaces in this drawing, it creates a corridor, and I now have a 3D model of it. As soon as it's done building. Bada bing, bada boom, and there it is. Oh, there's my roundabout. 
And if you want, you can take it into 3D, take a look at it. Now, before I do that, you'll notice there's lots of cross-section lines in here. Uh, it creates some surfaces and the surface profiles and targets that and the surface, the, the, anyways. Uh, I'm going to go into my corridor properties here real quick. I'm going to go set all of the frequencies for this corridor. And I'm going to change them all to, say, 10 feet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it at the profile geometry points, no, I don't want to do them there. This will just help simplify my corridor just a hair. Won't have to build quite as often. And I'm not sure why I did it do it there in the middle. What did I miss? 10, 10, 68. High low points, maybe that was one I missed. There we go. So it just simplifies it up just a hair. And this way, when I pull this off into my object viewer, so I just grab my corridor, go into my object viewer. I see, we'll go to a, a southwest isometric. Southwest isometric, and there is my corridor. And I'll zoom in just to air here. And there it is. So it created the corridor for me. And if I wanted to, I, then, I can then create a corridor surface from this. Um, if you create a corridor surface from it, you're most likely going to have to supplement it with uh, feature lines. Let me go ahead and do that real quick. And so I grab my corridor, corridor surfaces. I'm going to go create a new corridor surface. I will add in the top links. I'm going to add them as break lines. I am going to apply an overhang correction because you should always apply an overhang correction. I don't care if you don't think you should, you should. I'm then going to add in my feature lines and based off of the sub-assemblies that we're using, I'm going to go ahead and add the ones I think I need. So I'll add the crown in. I'll add in my ditch in and my ditch out because i got some ditches in here. I'll put in my edge of travel way, my flow line of my gutter, my top of cutter, and my hinge line. Okay. And, of course, I froze the layer it's on, so let me go ahead and do the same thing. I, let me put this on a different... Layer, oops, not border surfaces, right? There's my uh, junction surface for my corridor. Go ahead and select that, and I will put it on a layer that's not frozen. And there it is. You can see the island in there. Uh, a couple of little glitches in there that I probably need to clean up. Oh, that's just where that uh, uh, I had one little area of cut. So maybe I just want to pull my ditches out of my daylight altogether. And there it is. So that's a quick roundabout. Now I've got the capabilities of editing my roundabouts. Now uh, the signs, as I said before, right? We get the uh, the yield signs. We get the the direction signs. Um, we get the information about the different legs. All right, so apparently I have an issue with this one. Something's going too fast. Um, not sure what this all means, but for people that design roundabouts, I'm sure you know. And if I need to make changes to it, I can come up. I can go into my Explorer. I can add, edit the roundabout, and create a report. I can do do you know the splitter island. So if you want a splitter line, island in here, as you can see, this one doesn't have the island. I can put an island in there. Uh, it depends a lot of, also upon the uh, type of roundabout you're doing, the, the different options that you have. But there's all sorts of different tools up here. I can put crumble strips in, uh, visibility regions, um, sight lines, speed striping. That's so you can go really fast. <laughs> okay. And uh, that's what we have here for our... Uh, Vehicle tracking. Does anybody have any questions on anything you guys have seen? Love to answer any questions you guys have. 
not getting any. We'll give it a couple more minutes. But right. as you can see, it's a it's a very simple, well thought out program to use, and yet you know, highly valuable. I, I think so. Um, I so wish I had those parking tools when I was doing my design. I spent so much time offsetting and offsetting and offsetting and copying <laughs> and rotating and oh yeah, I wish I had those tools. Uh, a couple of things, we are on Facebook just like everybody else. We have our Twitter account. I've also put up my personal Twitter account here, so the C3D Plus. Uh, if you follow me on Twitter, you'll get to uh, see some cool civil 3D stuff, probably also an occasional picture of my boys. Um, and then also my blog up here as well. And uh, that's that's a good uh, blog to check out every once in a while. Uh, let's see, coming up, um, we've got AU coming up in a in a few weeks here now. Just yeah. really just a couple months. I don't know if any of you are going out to AU yet uh, or at this point, but uh, there are just a couple days left. We can purchase or you can purchase the AU early bird passes through us um, for just one more day, actually today and today and tomorrow, and um, that'll save you uh, about quite a bit of money, about six hundred dollars over the full price, which will be in effect uh, shortly. So. If you're interested in going to AU, give us a holler and we'll get that ordered for you. And let's see, uh, Joe has a question. How do you change from a 9 by 18 parking space to an 8 by 17 and a half parking space? All right, so to, you know, to change that, you basically do the same thing I did when I was creating uh, the disabled stalls or the handicapped stalls here. Um, you go edit the stall, all right, edit the parking bay. So I'm going to edit for this one here. All right, so I'm using the normal default one. I don't like the normal default one, so I'm going to go ahead and modify the normal default one. And down here, I can put in a, a custom bay width. All right, so I, I want this to be, instead of 9, I, I want it to be 8 feet. OK, OK. And you'll see them all change. I don't know if you were able to see that or not. Let me try that one more time. So I'm going to modify the normal. I don't want it to be 8. I want it to be 12, just because I like being weird. Select OK and OK, and you'll see they're all now 12 feet wide. Let's see. Looks like... Uh... All right. So I, I don't think there's any more questions. We uh, This video is recorded. Uh, we is. will be posting it up on our YouTube site shortly. Uh, stall length, um, you'd have to, it's there somewhere. I don't remember exactly where it is, Joe, but there is a way to get to it. Teresa, your, your hand was up there. Did you have a question for us, or were you just waving at us? <coughs> so if I edit the parking stalls here, it's going to have all of that information here for you, Joe. You just go in there and change it. I'm not exactly sure where in this it is, but it's in here somewhere. If you if you do have a tr question, Teresa, please type it into the question box, and we'll uh, we'll get to it there. There it is. All right. Can you use AutoCAD, or do you have to be in Civil 3D? That's a great question. I can't believe I didn't even mention that. This I is not a Civil 3D tool. Yes. This is an AutoCAD tool. So this will run on regular AutoCAD. Now, if you have Civil 3D it will do more. Like, for example, the corridors and driving the truck on the surface. If you don't have Civil 3D, it won't do that stuff. Because it can't recognize those things. Right. But okay. as far as the sweat path analysis, the parking lots, the horizontal layout of the uh, the roundabouts, that should all be able to be done in AutoCAD. Yep. And you might want to talk a little bit about, just to finish up here, since we got a couple minutes, about um, that it can also be brought into InfoWorks for better visualization as well. Okay. Or at least some of these tools are starting to be able to. Okay, so uh, Gordon asked another question, 2015 versus 2016. So what you're seeing here is 2016. Uh, the tools, there is a 2015 version that's virtually identical, um, works fine in 2015. Um, Teresa then also asked, uh, can you bring the already custom-made vehicles in here? That, from AutoTurn, probably not. Uh, there are two different programs that would be like saying, can I bring a, a, a block from Civil 3D into Revit and use it as a family? 
Uh, they're two different programs, two different companies, sort of. Right? They, yeah. they started off as two different companies, now uh, both Autodesk. But anyways, that's so I, I don't think you can bring auto-term vehicles into auto traffic. You can certainly duplicate them, and you know, I, I suppose if there was a way to save them out in some sort of AutoCAD format, you could then mm -hmm. use them as a template or something. But. All right. Uh, one final thing I did want to mention here, bring up real quick. Uh, this is InfraWorks that I'm showing you here. I this is this is cool. A, a lot of the stuff, or I shouldn't say a lot of the stuff. Uh, InfraWorks is just an amazing program. Um, it has roundabouts in it now. So if you're doing roundabouts, so I, I decided I, I drive through an intersection every single day uh, on my way to work, and on the way home it gets pretty crowded, and it's just not fun to drive through. So what I decided to do is I decided to revamp this with the roundabout. So what we got is we got I-25 strumming along through here. We got an exit ramp. We got the entrance ramp. We got the through street. And, and then we got the frontage road coming through here. And there's a stoplight here. There's a stoplight here. There's a stoplight here. And then there's people turning into a parking right here. And, and it's just not fun. So I decided to replace this with a roundabout. And not only did it create the roundabout for me, so, you know, it's it's a, it's a roundabout, it's this beautiful intersection thing here. And I come in here and edit it and do, you know, lots of fun things with it. And so I can change the approach lengths and whatnot. Um, but I can also do a traffic analysis on it. So not only can we do the swept path analysis now, but if I come into InfraWorks, I can do traffic simulation. This is pretty darn cool. All right, so I, I have uh, demand points. And uh, I don't have a simulation run, so let me run one real quick. So I'll run a quick simulation. This is, does cost cloud credits, so this is going to cost me a whole whopping one crowd, cloud credit. Um, that, that's equivalent to about a dollar. That'll come out of your correctly. check next time. All right. And so this is going to send some information up to Autodesk. It's going to run the simulation for me, and then it's going to send me back the um, animation, and then I can run the animation on here. Uh, it, it's going to take a moment, so it's simulating. It does typically it doesn't take too terribly long. Well, this is. I think that it's important to point out that this is really the beauty of the cloud credits and what's going on here. If you were trying to run this on your own computer, it would take a long time. Mm -hmm. But by using the the cloud and the mass uh, computing capabilities, you're, you're just dramatically speeding up a, a rather lengthy process by itself. Now, the animations can get a little hokey in here. Uh, I got some drifting vehicles, but this is the, the simulation that's going on here. It's, uh, I've uploaded this to YouTube as well. Um, if anybody's interested in seeing the video that I uploaded to YouTube, let me know. Ooh, I think we just had a collision there. Oh. Right. Um, it's pretty smooth on my screen, although it is a little uh, hokey, the paths they actually follow, but that's not the point of this. The point of this is not an animation. The point of this is, does the intersection work? And do, do we end up with backed up vehicles? And will everybody behave themselves to get through there? Right. <laughs> so if you'd like a, a link to that, um, it is up on my blog, I believe. If not, shoot me an email. Uh, support at cad-one.com, and I would be happy to send you a link to it. Anyway, lots of good things happening in the in the roadway design experience nowadays. So hopefully, you enjoyed our our webinar today. We will have a recording posted when Denny gets to it, which is yep. usually sometime in about within a week. Yeah, usually. about a week typically. So anyway, look for that there. And Brian, do you have any parting words for us? I don't. Thank you everybody for joining us. I hope you guys have a, a great week. And if anybody's going to be at GIS in the Rockies the next couple days, we'll see you there. That's right. All right. Bye now, folks.